to Leitner. Puts it up. You're listening to the Culture State Podcast. Get ready. Welcome back to another episode of the Culture State Podcast. I'm Chris Lee. And I'm Dennis Cox. And we always like to make sure that we are not only making history, but also covering history. So sometimes we have to break from the norm and do something a little bit different. A couple of months ago, Roy Williams retired from basketball. It kind of shocked a lot of us, uh, especially with the timing of when he uh, decided to retire. Duke just made history themselves where they decided that they're going to hire Nina King, as their new director of athletics, uh, taking over for Kevin White, she will be the first person of color and the first woman to ever lead Duke's athletic uh, program um, from that position, which is huge, being that she's only one of three black women in the entire nation right now in Power 5 schools to to lead uh, their athletic uh, programs as well. You know, Chris, I... When I think about our conversation that we had previously with Amber Nichols, one thing that you and I had talked about is that how Amber got to the position that where she is as a member of the Washington Wizards organization, as a GM of the Capital City Go-Go, how she got there, not only, you know, we talked about how oftentimes people say like, oh, they're just checking a box because, okay, female, diversity, all this stuff, checking boxes. No, these people are getting hired on their merit which is something that I think is very important is that Nina King, you look at her qualifications, you're like, well, why hasn't she been an athletic director previously seeing mm-hmm. all that she has done in her career? And that's something that popped into my head was their conversation that we have with Amber. And we're starting to see the changing of the guard in terms of who has represented athletics here in the state of North Carolina at the collegiate level over the past, basically 30 years in terms mm-hmm. of athletic directors, coaches, People that are just moving on, like we mentioned, Roy Williams in his retirement. Coach K is going to be retiring here soon. David Cutcliffe, the head coach at Duke for football, is going to be retiring here soon. So guess what? There's going to be new people stepping in that has to fill that void and carry on the tradition of greatness that we see in the state. Absolutely. And and just to go back uh, a little bit more on the Coach of State podcast, if you've been sleeping, we've given you Amber Nichol- Nichols, like uh, you mm-hmm. were talking about right there. Of course, that great Roy Williams episode. But we also talked to Jennifer King, who is yeah. the first uh, African-American female to have a full time coaching position in the NFL. So there is, um, you know, a theme here where mm-hmm. there are uh, women who are getting a chance to uh, have a shot in male dominated areas. And like you said, not just because they're checking a box, but because they're, they are absolutely qualified for, they're the best people for that job. If you look at Nina King, um, 13 years, she's been at Duke, which is the same amount of time that, uh, Kevin White's been there. She's basically been learning under Kevin White this entire time. And one of the things that, you know, this interview is actually an interview that I did with her, uh, for television for WRL, but we're going to take that full interview since only a portion of it was able to air and put it here so you guys can hear the full thing. Uh, but one of the things she told me in that interview is that she's the one who led the search to wow. hire Kara Lawson. And Kara Lawson is there as a great hire. It, it seems like it's working out so far for Duke, even though they didn't have a full season uh, last last year. But this is uh, one of the things where she has uh, already a great track record of a really good splash hire. So when the time does come, when she has to replace Coach K, who's 74 years old, heading into his 42nd year at Duke, or has to uh, replace David Cutcliffe, who's 66 years old, who basically has you know revived. I don't even know if you want to say revived Duke because they don't necessarily have a long history of great football tradition, but – he made Duke formidable um, when they were, you know, bas- basically a stepping stone in, mm-hmm. the, <laughs> you yep. know, in the ACC uh, for such a long time. And so that won't be an easy task because it's not like you can, you know, recruit 100 guys with the right grade levels and a great right uh, athletic ability to come to Duke, you know, because there it's going to be spread out all over the nation. So it's, it's going to be a tough job uh, for her, but, you know, she can do it. She 100% can do it, 100%. And you, you hit the nail on the head in return in terms of she led that search for Kara Lawson. Kara Lawson, who actually was an assistant 
for the Boston Celtics before being brought on to Duke. And she was in the I, bubble, I had to leave the bubble to come to Duke. <laughs> that's yeah, that's right. She, yeah, she was down in the bubble down in Florida in Orlando. Yeah. Had to leave to come take the job here. And again, someone else who was hired based off of her merit and what she's done with her, not only her playing career, but her coaching career and everything that she's done. So yeah, I think Nina King is, she's like you said, been there for 13 years already. She's ready to take the step and, and take over for Kevin White. Uh, I think it's a, a great hire. And I think Duke is in great hands moving forward. And whomever that she decides to hire, like you said, to replace Coach K, to replace Coach Cutcliffe, I think she's gonna think she's gonna nail it. I love when um the, one of the things I love about diversity is the fact that um, you know, as much as we may not um like the fact that it is happening. Um, when you have a different um, look to you, when you are of a different sex, a different racial background, because of the way the world views you, you have different views coming into certain rooms, right? And so um, that only helps out rooms because sometimes things can naturally be uh, tone deaf when you don't have a representative, uh, especially when you can't look at a thing, look at something from a certain position. So when you have um, somebody like Anina King who's able to come in and and say like, hey, you know, and Kevin White wasn't big on NIL, right? But now this AD, she's big on NIL. She's like, no, nah, we, we need to figure out ways that our athletes can grow their brands while they're getting a great education and getting, um, you know, great coaching at Duke University because it's only going to make us better in the future. Um that is that's the right person <laughs> to have. So yeah. you'll you'll hear her talk about that uh, as well, um, especially with this changing landscape of college sports. It's not even just about the diversity portion of it, but college sports is changing so much right now. And you're going to need to be able to keep up because if you're not able to keep up, you're just going to get lost. Yeah, like you said, name, image and likeness. I mean, it's been talked about tons over the last oh, several years actually but yeah someone that's going to be on the player side that holds a position that that Nita Kings can hold being AD I think it's it's only going to benefit everybody in the long run well let's not wait any longer Chris let's get to your conversation with Nina King the new or soon to be new athletic director at Duke right after this you, you spoke about the history that you're you're making. Um, you're going to be one of three uh, black females who are going to be, you know, 80s at a power five school. But just past that, I know you have, you know, two young boys. And, you know, when you get a chance to go home and talk to them about what's going on, how do they feel about the history that mommy is making? And do they even kind of recognize what's what's happening, um, you know, with this uh, new position you're going to take on September 1st? Yeah, you know, I don't know that they understand the history, um, but they do know that it's important um, and and that their mom is doing something um, that not a lot of people have had an opportunity to do uh, that, that look like me. And so, um, you know, really, they're just they were most excited to be on TV last Friday. <laughs> That's the extent of their their excitement at this moment, but it's certainly something that my husband and I will just continue to to teach them about opportunities. And obviously, as I said on Friday, dreaming big and, and aspiring um, to to be successful and and achieving their dreams. So we've we've got a good learning moment here with the kids. Um, I'm from North Carolina, and um, I'm over the last maybe five years just learning more about the history of Duke and. Um, what, uh, how important Duke, Duke has been to the black community and what uh, Washington Duke kind of started off with as to, uh, to kind of be innovative in his time, you know, for what he, he kind of was doing things that, you know, would seem just kind of normal status quo now. But in his time, though, it was innovative and it was helping out the black community and uh, learned that a black man designed you know, Cameron Indoor Stadium and things like that. So there's a history of Duke kind of breaking down the walls and breaking down the barriers. Um, how do you feel about, I don't know, even know if you know any, any of that stuff, but I'm sure you, you do. Um, mm -hmm. How do you feel about being a part of that? You're a part of that lineage and that history of Duke breaking down those barriers. 
It's pretty cool. Um, but I mean, it's, I, I've got a great responsibility, right? I mean, to, to be a role model for those that come after me, um, for young kids, but then also in this moment to make sure that we're creating opportunities for deserving um, administrators, coaches, people of color, women, um, to have more opportunities to lead um, because we need to make sure that we're growing as a diverse workforce, our student athletes are, are a diverse student body. We've got a diverse student body at Duke. Our student athletes are a diverse cohort of, of Duke students. And so our workforce should be as well. And so I'm just really excited to, to have that opportunity to lead from my new seat, almost, uh, almost there, um, to make sure that we're providing opportunities. So I kind of see it in two parts, to be a role model for young children, but then also currently in this moment to provide opportunities for young up and coming administrators and coaches. Speaking on that, like what's what's something about the history of Duke that you've maybe learned that uh, is, is really exciting to you? You just touched on it. I mean, we had a black man design the chapel and, and Cameron Indoor Stadium at, at a time where um, people of color didn't have opportunities. And, and I think that's just Absolutely amazing. I mean, th this campus is full of um, rich history. It, it not, it's not just athletics, it's, it's Duke University. And I'm just so proud to be here um, at an institution that recognizes and celebrates diversity. It's awesome. Uh, so Kevin White, of course, uh, he'll be, uh, you know, he's like a mentor at this point, uh, but he'll be stepping down and, and you're stepping up. And uh, by the time he steps down, he would been here for 13 years. If you stay for that same amount of time, you're going to make some big decisions when it comes to men's basketball, uh, to college football, to, to the college football team, um, and, you know, maybe some other big time programs, but those are, you know, of course, the revenue sports. Um, first off, does that feel like pressure to you? And are you looking forward to that challenge of you're going to be the one to probably make the decisions as to the direction that those programs are going to go for their, uh, the, the foreseeable future? Yes and yes, <laughs> looking forward to it. And yes, it's a challenge. Um, you know, listen, of course, we're going to have coach transition during my time and, and not just with men's basketball, as you mentioned, um, a host of our other sports as well. Um, but I think relative to men's basketball, we've got an incredible iconic coach um, who's created quite a legacy here over 40 years. Um, and, and Coach K has earned the right to let us know when he's ready to, to step away. Um, he is the best Best to ever do it. We hope he's here for a very long time, as long as he wants to coach. Um, but when it comes time to replace him, as with any of our coaches, we'll be prepared. Um, I, you know, I've, I've been in the business for, for a while and, and have been watching Kevin and, and how others do it. Um, and, you know, we had our women's basketball search last summer that I led and we got that done in eight days. And, and so it, it's because we're, we're always prepared. We never know when a coach is going to tell us that they're stepping away or when we might make a coaching change or if something happens to a coach health or, or whatever it might be. Um, and, and so it's really important for continuity of our programs, for our student athletes to, to make those decisions quickly. Um, and so we will, we'll, we'll be ready for, for men's basketball and football, but um, I hope our coaches, those two in particular are here for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I do want to uh, stick on that for a little bit because, uh, you know, hiring Carol Lawson was uh, a big time splash, not only because of the name value, but also because of what she represents as well. Like yourself, she's the first uh, black head coach uh, for Duke women's basketball. Um, uh, when when it, you were leading that search uh, and, and you came across Kara, what was it like um, to, to get the vibe with her and to kind of uh, understand and get to the point that, okay, this is who we need uh, for, for Duke women's basketball uh, for the future. How, how was that process for you? Yeah. I mean, instantaneous bond relationship. It was, it was fantastic. Um, and I could see Kara fitting here um, from, from the moment we started talking about uh, the potential of her becoming our next head women's basketball coach. Um, she's such a relationship person. And um, although she hadn't been coaching in the college game, um, she had relationships with so many around, um, you know, as, as an ESPN analyst for so long, she has been watching games and attending practices and talking to coaches and learning from the best. Um, and so the, the not having college, ex college coaching experience wasn't an issue at all because 
she's such a brilliant basketball mind. I knew that she'd be fine and in, in, on that part. Um, but the relationships piece, I mean, came in here right away um, and, and developed deep, meaningful relationships with our student athletes, um, hired a, a brilliant coaching staff and, and has just been a great Duke athletics um, colleague, not just in women's basketball, but, but, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've seen her. She's um, talked to the baseball team and talked to the women's soccer team. And, and so our, our coaches, her colleagues really recognize you know, the, the Duke fit that she is and, and what she brings to not just Duke women's basketball, but Duke athletics as a whole. Uh, to lead that search, is that a conversation between you and Kevin where he's like, hey, I'm going to put this in your hands? How did you find out about that? And, and um, you know, how did it feel to kind of have the keys uh, to that, you know, historical mm -hmm. hire? Yeah, it felt great. Um, it, it was exciting. And, and I have led searches for, for us before, um, a, a couple of coaching searches as well as administrator hires. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't my first rodeo, but as the women's basketball administrator for the past several years, um, it, it was just always something, again, that I, I had been prepared for, for when the time came. And, and working closely with Kevin had an opportunity to, to constantly kind of talk about, um, you know, who's on our short list or who should we have. And then I think being on the women's basketball committee in, in the NCAA community gave me a great opportunity to constantly be watching and, and I'm watching games for selection time, but then I'm also watching the sidelines and, and the coaches on the sidelines and, and interacting with coaches come tournament time. Um, and so I think that really was a, a huge benefit um, for when it came time to do the Duke women's basketball search. Um, Kevin had, had always said when it, when, when the time comes, you will lead the charge. And so, just extremely grateful for his confidence in me um, and, and handing the reins over. Now, of course, as our athletic director, he had the, the ultimate decision making power, but that's the beauty of Kevin White. He really, um, he really empowers us as, as athletics administrators to, to do our jobs. And um, he has a lot of confidence in, in all of us and our executive team. And um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity. And I was just, the, the hire was awesome because Kara is awesome. What's the biggest lesson you've, uh, or the best lesson I should say you've learned from uh, Kevin White? I said this in the press conference on Friday, and I don't think the the person that asked me the question liked my answer, but it's true. Um, to treat people how you want to be treated. I mean, obviously, it's something that I learned from my mom at a young age, and and you know, in school and that kind of thing. But it's something that Kevin always focused on. And when we're making decisions, especially personnel decisions, or you know working on something related to our student athletes. And he just constantly reminds us to treat people how we wanna be treated. And I think that's really important in this business. Um, I would say another one is um, to, to operate within your own skin. Um, nobody can be you better than you. And so I, I constantly kind of remind myself of that. Take a step back, I'm me, do it my way um, and, and you know, be confident in, in who I am. So, so many nuggets of wisdom from Kevin and I'm sure uh, all the, the people he's mentored around the country would say a lot of the same things. He's just, he's a brilliant mentor and leader that we've had an opportunity to learn from. And uh, while you're uh, there, you're, you're probably gonna deal with, I know you spoke about this at the press conference as well, uh, name image likeness. Um, that's going to be something that's going to be big, be big that's coming up. Um, do you already have ideas or things in the works to help uh, facilitate things for student athletes? Uh, because that's also going to be a part of recruiting. If Duke mm -hmm. is going to be uh, the place where not only can you get a great education, get some of the best coaching, but now you can also kind of be set up with the best name image likeness uh, situations, you know, in the country as well. Is that something where you're already churning out ideas and kind of maybe starting committees or things like that to focus around that. Yes, we've been, we've started a while ago when we saw this train coming and, and frankly, if we were just starting now, and if I was just contributing ideas now, we'd be really way behind um, because the idea is, is to be prepared for July 1st um, or sometime soon thereafter, just kind of depending on, on if we get NCAA legislation enacted um, so that it's a, a more uniform rules applied, to, applied across the NCAA rather than all of the various state rules that we have potentially coming online this July 1st and 
and beyond. So um, if I, you know, I'm not coming into the game late here and, and telling our team, here's what we need to do. And here are my big ideas um, because it's the train has already left the station. We're already preparing. We're already planning. Um, I think education and awareness is going to be a huge part of it um, to make sure that, that our student athletes understand um, what they can and can't do and the benefit and the value and, and their brand value and, and what it means to have a brand and, and, um, and profit off of, of, of their brand. Um, so we've got a great team of folks here that, that have been working diligently for over a year now uh, to prepare for whatever it looks like. I think that's the hard part. We don't know what it looks like, but July 1st will be here really soon. I want to thank Duke University and Nina King for taking a little bit of time out. Um, she, you know, had literally only 15 minutes <laughs> to talk to me. So I wanted to go further in depth. And, um, you know, initially doing that interview, I kind of found out two hours beforehand that uh, I was able to do it. So uh, we didn't get a chance to make it a podcast type of situation, but I would love the the opportunity to actually, you know, have Nina King come for the podcast, and which means a longer conversation, a little bit more intimate um, and, and, you know, a little bit more fun as well. So, um, she's, she's definitely, she, she has a great feeling to her, Dennis. It feels like she's the type of person that if you catch her in a grocery store, you can walk up to her and say, you know what? I, I like what you did over at Duke. You know, that new hire was amazing. And she'd sit there and have a conversation with you. That's what it feels like Nina King. Would yeah. Be. I, yeah, a hundred percent. And just watching her and seeing how she operates and just the conversation that she had with you. I was like, I, I would love to work for someone like her, you know, mm -hmm. that's for, for me as someone, if I'm a potential hire to, to Duke, whether I'm an assistant coach or, you know, looking to maybe work, you know, as you know, the, someone who replaces coach K or coach Cutcliffe, you know, depending on where you're coming from, who your boss is going to be is is vital like all right is this person going to empower me sure. to do what i need to do and support me and everything i need to do and i think nina king is that person that just about anybody would love to work for it's going to be important to have that right now uh in college sports especially when it comes down to recruiting um yeah i think i heard joe obvious or either uh joe obvious or joe Gilio say this recently on the og and it's, it's a great point that Kids aren't necessarily, and, and let's stick with basketball here. Kids aren't necessarily going to schools because they want to go to that school or it's been a dream to go to that school. Uh, a lot of these kids come who are, you know, the five stars, four stars that would go to uh, a Duke University, a lot of them changed their high schools, you know, two or three, maybe four times mm -hmm. uh, in the last four or five years. And remember, there are people who are, um, you know, reclassing and you know staying back a year and things like that to up their recruiting you know so they don't even have loyalty to necessarily a high school maybe not even to an aau team they can you know switch aau teams as well to get certain levels of exposure um that's better for them in their career they're not necessarily going to come to duke because they always wanted to come to duke that's not a bad thing and this isn't calling out the kids this isn't to um you know, put the kids down or anything like that. But a lot of fans are are concerned about that. Um, what it does do is it opens up the playing field, I think, a little bit so that a Duke doesn't just rest on the fact that they're Duke. Yeah. And um, you have to actually do things to uh, attract these players. And I think that Nina King understands that. And, and she gets that. And she's going to be that person to help lead Duke into that. Because now... Um, you know, college basketball has competition. There's yep. the NBA G League and there's also overtime elite and uh, also players, you know, have, have taken a big step to go overseas to go pro because they can go pro at, at the age of 18. So there is uh, competition and, you know, Duke and all these other power five programs are going to have to keep up. Well, you talk about people going overseas. I'm, I'm wearing a Charlotte Hornets shirt right now. Look at who was just drafted number three overall by the Hornets. Lamelo Ball mm -hmm. didn't go to college, played overseas, and look look what he is now. He, the guy's a massive star. Uh, so yeah, there is competition for college basketball, and if that forces them to evolve and and to compete, then good. That's a good thing, I think, in my mind for college basketball because it, it it's going to force coaches and teams and and schools to to really look at themselves and say, all right. 
what's best for college basketball as a whole? How do we advance and move forward? Because like you said, if you don't have that mindset, then you're going to get left behind. And then college basketball as a product is just going to continue to drop and drop and drop. And that nobody wants that at all. People want to have the best players playing in college basketball because we've talked about it before. We've all said it. It is a business. And when there's Mm -hmm. competition for businesses, it forces you to, to either elevate or get left out. I think uh, with Overtime Elite and NBA G League, I think it's a good idea. And I, I love the fact that uh, these things are going to be around. And um, and I'm not you know, of the mindset that it's going to ruin college sports at all. You know, I, I think uh, it's going to be it's going to be good for college sports um, um, because there's a lot of people who are upset with the the one and done situation. So the guys who are the five stars. Maybe they just go do their thing and they get paid. And then you have people who may stick around a little bit longer if they don't go to the transfer portal, which is another situation um, at schools a little bit longer. Uh, But then also, um, if you think about it, maybe it opens up more room for more superstars to grow. Because when Duke is full of five stars, somebody like a Joey Baker doesn't get a chance to have a lot of playing time. And maybe, you know, a future Joey Baker can have more playing time um, and able to grow maybe into an NBA star. Steph Curry was not somebody highly recruited, even though his dad was one of the best NBA shooters ever. And he had Davidson was like the, the highest offer that he had. He goes to Davidson, ends up becoming a lottery pick, right? Yeah. He needed college. Carmelo Anthony um, in an era where he could have gone straight to the NBA, went to college because he still needed to develop a little bit, had an amazing one year at Syracuse and was the third overall pick, two picks behind LeBron James in 2003. Um, you know, college will still crank out superstars. There's still going to be great basketball players coming out of college. And so I don't think people need to be too upset uh, with these new leagues forming. And I think somebody like Nina King gets that and she understands that, um, that there's still a great opportunity here uh, not only for competition uh, with these other leagues, but also to to grow more stars uh, for futures for the for the future, I should say. Well, I think Duke's in good hands moving forward with with Nina King as their athletic director. I I'm excited to see how Duke continues to to be a great athletic department as a whole. You know, obviously we we focus a lot on on basketball and on football, and obviously the big mainstream sports, but Duke athletics as a whole is great. And I think that you're going to continue to get better and improve under under her leadership. And I think overall, the leadership in the triangle and throughout the state is in is in pretty good shape. I would say I think we see across the state athletics here in North Carolina not only be great, but continue to get great even at other schools like App State getting to the NCAA tournament, UNC Charlotte and their football program getting better. So I think it's, I think it's nice to see everything just progressing and moving forward and just elevating across the state. UNCG men's basketball doing great. Oh yeah. 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 UNCG basketball. That's right. And I I forgot. They have, (laughs) they have, uh, they have a woman AD Kim record doing a great job over there. So she, she made a splash hire with Wes Miller. And yeah. now she's got uh, Mike Jones coming Who? from Radford. Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. Who? <laughs> His number may be uh, 281-330-8004 if you want to hit him up on a low and ask him who he is. <laughs> why is it? Why do I know that number a lot better than my work phone number? When WREL gave me that number, I still have to look at my my business card to remember my my work number. Oh man! But Mike Jones, I know his number back two thousand and four. <laughs> oh, I, I no comment on that. No comment on that. <laughs> Maybe I need to make a little jingle for myself to remember my uh, my nine one nine number. We should do that. Yeah, off air. Obviously, we don't want this. We don't want your work phone number to be out there in the public. Not yet, at least. Yeah, maybe at some point, but at yeah, some not point. right now. Not right now. 
Uh, congratulations to Nina King. Uh, we thank her for uh, the time that she was able to spend with me for the WRL interview. Hopefully we can have her for a formal culture state interview. I feel like she'd um, she'd enjoy that. Mm-hmm. She'd have some fun with that. Oh, yeah. And um, her, her kids are basically North Carolinians because they've grown up here. So maybe we should have her kids on, too. Let's do it. We can fit them all in here. Let's go. <laughs> that's that's right because now we have all the different boxes for everybody so uh that's they can right. they can absolutely fit in uh thank you guys for listening to this episode of the culture state podcast you know how many stars we need of them i mean need from you here i go not talking again five five, five. Thick five stars. Find us from wherever you get your podcasts, including WRL.com. And just search podcasts. Again, on YouTube, you can watch us. Just search 99.9 The Fan. I'm just showing you my calluses. Show you I've been in the gym. Oh, look at me. I do snatches. My name's Chris. (laughs) I've been in the gym, son. (laughs) No gloves. No powder. Bare hands. By myself. Every day. (laughs) Every day. You want to go night night? <laughs> I will not. Finish Everybody go that. night night. I will not finish. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not finishing that. <laughs> I want my job. Thank you guys. <laughs> All right, we're out. The Culture State Podcast, part of the Capital Broadcasting Podcast Network, with new shows coming out every Wednesday. Download and subscribe from wherever you get your podcasts, including the WREL Sports Fan app.